If you're wondering how you can actually lose belly fat and not have to count calories, today I'm sharing 20 really easy, different ways that you can tap into fat burning mechanisms and achieve your weight loss goals. My name's Autumn. I'm a certified clinical nutritionist with my master's in nutrition, human performance. And the first thing you can do is start adding in magnesium. Magnesium can help to naturally increase our sleep hormone melatonin, which improves our sleep quality. And poor sleep quality is directly tied to weight gain around the belly. I personally like to take a magnesium supplement, usually about 30 to 60 minutes before bed. I have a blog post that goes along with today's video that has all these resources for you, including my favorite magnesium brands listed within the blog post. So if you wanna follow along or you wanna check those out, you can check the link for that blog post down description below. Okay, the second is to add 250 steps per hour to your day. And even if you are exercising, most people are pretty sedentary for like the eight hours of a work day. The less time that we're moving, the less time that our muscles are actually getting activated. And this can trend towards insulin resistance. Insulin resistance can make it harder to tap into fat burning and is also directly tied to weight gain around the belly. So even just getting up every hour, walking around your house or your office for one to two minutes to hit those 250 steps can add an extra 2000 steps to your day and help to break up those sedentary moments of the day too. Hitting the 250 steps is pretty easy when you have a Fitbit because it does remind you every hour if you haven't hit those 250 steps, so you can just like get up and walk around. That's what I do. Okay, the third tip is to use avocado instead of banana in smoothies, especially if you're looking to lose belly fat. Oftentimes those who struggle with weight gain around the belly have some degree of insulin resistance. So reducing those high insulin spiking foods like higher sugar fruits can help to tackle this specific type of weight loss goal. And you can get some type of sweetness in a smoothie without using banana by using other lower sugar fruits like strawberries or raspberries or blackberries, or you can use a zero sugar protein powder that's naturally sweetened with monk fruit. Okay, the fourth tip is to eat high diaz proteins. The diaz system is a way of measuring protein quality. And those that are high diaz means that it's easiest for the body to absorb and use. Protein is the most important food source when it comes to achieving a body recomposition goal, which is where you're losing body fat while maintaining or increasing muscle mass. It also helps you to feel full and satisfied and prevent sugar cravings. The highest diaz foods come from animal-based sources like eggs, Greek yogurt, beef, chicken, fish, whey protein powder. Nearly all plant-based sources are going to be below a score of one, which which means it's a lower diaz score. But some of the higher plant-based options include some plant-based protein powders and different soy products. I personally recommend using a fermented soy if you are going to go for that, like tempa or tempeh. Okay, the fifth tip is to eat butternut squash instead of potatoes. Potatoes are pretty high glycemic, which means it has a pretty big response on insulin. So if we're looking to tap into fat burning, we don't want to eat those really high insulin spiking foods. Sweet potatoes are a lot better than regular potatoes. They do tend to have a lower glycemic response. But if you already are insulin resistant, you're better off going for an even lower glycemic response food, which would be like butternut squash, which has a very low glycemic load. Okay, the sixth tip is to have 30 grams worth of protein before any type of dessert. Protein helps to stabilize the blood sugar response of these various higher sugar foods. So therefore it can have less of an insulin impact as long as you're using those high diet score proteins. But on that note, tip number seven is to stick to one treat per week, at least right now. Structured treat meals has been shown to help with maintaining long-term weight loss progress but especially if struggling with insulin resistance, we also need to balance this out with enough time for the body to naturally allow that insulin level to come down. So I found a good sweet spot of one treat meal per week is a good balance for that. I have a treat meal strategy for how you can still have the treat meal, but make progress toward weight loss and wellness goals. I'll have that also linked in the blog post. Okay, tip number eight is to walk for 15 minutes at least outside per day. Of course, weather permitting, but there's been some really interesting research on walking outside in natural environments and how can actually decrease our stress hormone cortisol. And high levels of cortisol are directly tied to weight gain around the belly. So this is another one that's really focused specifically on belly fat loss. Okay, tip number nine, don't add any sugar to your coffee. Or on that note, don't have soda. Liquid sugar is so quickly absorbed and so quickly causes that insulin to just skyrocket. And it's pretty easy to have a lot more sugar than you would in any other type of meal when it's in liquid form. Okay, tip number 10 is to remove rice, bread, and pasta. Again, at least for right now, while insulin level are naturally dipping down. These foods will certainly not help with achieving a belly fat loss goal because they are so insulin spiking. At best, it's going to cause a plateau, if not lead to further weight gain. For example, cooked white rice has a glycemic load of 46. That is so high. Okay, tip number 11 is to add two days per week of lower body workouts. It's been found that resistance or strength training can help to improve insulin sensitivity, which is the opposite of insulin resistance, which can then make it easier to burn fat as fuel. And Lower body is often skipped or maybe reduced down to one day per week. But guys, don't skip leg day. Don't do it. <laughs> 
In terms of workouts, you really get the most bang for your buck from leg day, because especially when you're doing those compound exercises like walking lunges or squats or deadlifts, you're hitting so many different muscle groups that are such bigger muscle groups than upper body or core, that you're really getting way more bang for your buck. Still make sure to incorporate those other workouts, but just don't skip leg day. Okay, the 12th tip is to pair collagen with complete proteins. Protein alone is already really helpful because it's so satiating, it helps with body recomposition, but especially if you struggle with hunger or cravings, it's been found that pairing collagen with complete protein sources can really help to improve satiety even further. I like to do this with natural sources of collagen by pairing bone broth, which is really rich in collagen, in recipes that already have complete proteins like soups and stews. But you could also add like collagen powder into your protein rich smoothie. Okay, the 13th tip is to not pair cheese with crackers. Cheese isn't the problem. Cheese is actually really high in protein and fat to help keep you satiated. And it's been found that full fat dairy products is actually protective against obesity. It's what people often pair cheese with, which is crackers. Crackers are really high in refined carbohydrates and it's really easy to eat a lot of them. So instead just have cheese with your meal or just have it on its own. Okay, tip number 14 is to get eight hours of sleep. We can improve sleep quality to a point, like with tools such as magnesium, but we also need enough time to get that quality sleep. So if that means like not watching an extra hour of Netflix before bed, maybe that's something we all need to do. <laughs> Which speaking of tip number 15, turn off all technology 30 to 60 minutes before bed. This is one really easy way to improve sleep quality, even if you can't increase how long you're able to sleep. Because when we expose our eyes to bright screens, like with our laptops, our phones, our TVs, it tells our brain it's daylight, it shuts off our sleep hormone melt melatonin, and it makes it really hard to get that deep, high quality sleep. Okay, tip number 16 is to use intermittent fasting, but break your fast earlier in the day. Now, intermittent fasting is one of my favorite tools. I talk about it all the time. I have my complete intermittent fasting bundle and meal plans and programs that have helped thousands of men and women around the world, especially because intermittent fasting has been specifically found to address insulin and to naturally decrease it during the fasted state. But when you eat and what you eat really matters if you wanna achieve results. Now, one really Really great tip is to break your fast a little bit earlier in the day. So rather than breaking your fast at like 2 or 3 p.m., break your fast like 10 or 11 a.m. Breaking the fast earlier in the day has been found to have better results in terms of decreasing body fat percentage and for balancing out cortisol levels. And if you are unsure on how to actually do the eating window to support the intermittent fast, or if you just haven't seen results with using intermittent fasting in the past, highly recommend you check out my complete intermittent fasting bundle. That'll also be linked in the description as well as in the blog post. Okay, tip number 17 is to have eggs instead of oatmeal for breakfast. Even if you are using intermittent fasting, the first meal really matters. Studies have found that eggs are way more satiating than oatmeal and helps to prevent hunger longer than oatmeal. Plus eggs are much higher in protein and are actually a high dyad score protein. Okay, tip number 17 is to switch to full fat dairy. Low fat dairy products tend to have added sugar. Plus studies have actually found that full fat dairy products are protective against obesity. My personal favorites are full fat cottage cheese, green yogurt, and of course, cheese. <laughs> okay, tip number 19 is to stick to water, sparkling water, coffee, and tea. No fruit juice, no sweetened coffees or teas, no soda. Even kombuchas can be a little suspect, at least for right now. Again, we're looking at a specific goal and the body tends to do a really good job of becoming better able to handle various carbohydrates and sugars when it's less insulin resistant, but we have to meet the body where it's at right now. And if there is some degree of insulin resistance, then these really sugary drinks will definitely not help you achieve your goal. But water, sparkling water, unsweetened coffee and tea. There's a lot of ways to add so much flavor to those. I have so many coffee and tea recipes on my website. I'll also have those linked. And as for sparkling water, I love the brand Spindrift. You can find it at Costco and even at most health food stores. Okay, tip number 20 is to not snack. Sticking to two to three main meals of the day, even if you are using intermittent fasting, can help the body to naturally allow insulin to dip down between meals. If we're snacking even within our eating window, we're constantly getting these little hits of insulin and not allowing it to come naturally back down but you do need to make sure that those meals have enough protein to keep you satisfied and have enough nutrients so that you don't then crave more sugar that will ultimately work against your goals. Now, if weight loss is your goal, you're really not going to want to miss my three minutes of no BS straight to the point tips on how to lose belly fat. You can find that video right here. Also, if you're new to my channel and you love this science-backed information, make sure you subscribe right here. I come out with new videos every Tuesday and Thursday. All right, guys, thanks so much for tuning in and I'll see you in my next video.